Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the Le Creuset store. I'm so excited to be here because of course, you have seen me use my Le Creuset pieces in many videos. So they've let me come in, crash in the party. I've got a whole crowd of people and I'm showing them how to make my strawberry shortcake cobbler, which you are gonna love it. It is a super forgiving recipe. I'm gonna make it here on the cooktop. So let's go ahead and jump on into the party. So we, I'm so glad you guys are here today. We're gonna do some strawberry cobbler. So let me make sure real quick because we are recording this for YouTube. So fair warning, there's a camera there, and there's a camera there, and there's a microphone here. So just, you might end up on camera. <laughs> so what we have are just some nice fresh strawberries here. Of course, we've got strawberry season, so I'm taking full advantage. This recipe can also be done as um, peaches. It's great as a peach cobbler, or you could also do a cherry cobbler. But I went ahead and just chopped up some strawberries here. We're going to use 12 ounces. So this is actually going to make three different cobblers because I'm going to be hanging out till four o'clock. So if you have friends who want cobblers, send them on down. But I thought it'd be good too to throw some plums in there because strawberries are really sweet, right? And so when it comes to desserts, I am not a super sweet person, right? Like I want it to be sweet enough, but I don't want it to be saccharine sweet. You know, sometimes you're like, oh, it's just too, too sweet. So I thought throwing some plums in there would just kind of break that up. And these are not fully ripe, so they're still a little bit tangy, which I appreciate. It has that little bit of sourness to it. And some people are like, how do you chop up plums? If you guys saw how I did that, you just take the plum just like that and slice down the sides. That's going to be your quickest, easiest way to slice up any sort of stone fruit. So, and I actually already diced up those plums as well, and we are using our beautiful Le Creuset here. This, uh, this piece, I have a completed one right here, so there will be samples very shortly, um, but I'm gonna cook it in this one. And of course, we know that using cast iron is awesome because we can use it on the cooktop, but then we can also use it in the oven. I remember that was like a massive revelation the first time that I realized, oh my gosh, I can stick this piece of cookware in the oven. So I'm going to throw about 12 ounces of fresh strawberries in here. Now strawberries, you guys know, have a lot of moisture in them. So if you start cooking them, there's going to be a lot of liquid in there. So we're not going to add a whole lot of liquid to this mixture. I'm going to throw some of those plums in there just to break up again that sweetness. But I am going to throw some extra sugar in there because we want to make a nice sauce. Have you guys had a good cobbler before? Yeah? Anywhere in town serve a good cobbler? I know some of y'all are restaurant fans, so. Yeah, who has a good cobbler in town? Uh, not, me. not you? <laughs> well, I bet you watch and learn and you'll be, you'll be ready for this one. So you guys saw that I didn't measure. I am not a measuring kind of person. That's why typically I don't do baking, but this is like baking for people who don't typically bake, right? It, I promise it'll turn out. And then when I came in here, they're like, what is in your weird mason jar? This is just lemon juice, but I've got a big lemon tree that puts out a ton of lemons every year. So I freeze it and stick it in a little Ziploc bag so then I can just take it out every week and have it here in my little mason jar all ready to cook up. So pretty much simple so far, right guys? Yeah. Yep, we can do this. So we just got some strawberries. If you guys want to come in here, you are more than welcome to come check it out. You want to wave to the camera? Here, come right here. There you go. Hey! <laughs> He's in it. <laughs> See how we got that liquid coming through in there? That's, that's great, but now we want to sort of like make that a little bit more solid, right? We don't want strawberry soup. That's not what we're going for today. So that's when we bust out the cornstarch. It's really great for making sauces because it makes everything just a little bit more gooey, right? So it's going to firm up this sauce. And again, I'm really good at measuring over here, but I'm going to do about a tablespoon in there. And then when you are baking, do not forget to add your salt, you guys. This is something that's like major, major important, even when you're making desserts, because salt is a flavor activator. So if you've got flavors, salt just acts, it interacts with your tongue to open it up and say, oh, that is the best strawberry ever, right? So we wanna make sure not to miss out on the salt. And so we let that hang out here on the stove and just bubble away for a little bit. I'm gonna turn down the heat. But now what I wanna do is make the topping, because we talked about how there's crisp and there's cobbler, and so cobbler's got more of a biscuit topping. So we're gonna kinda play with some butter today. Hope you guys like butter. Yes, we've got butter fans, and this is softened butter. And then I've got one cup here of all-purpose flour. And all purpose is just fine. We don't need to go with like a bread flour or anything like that. That's gonna be just the right consistency there. Throw a little bit more salt in there. And then a little bit more sugar. And because that butter is softened, now sometimes I just get in there and say, who needs a mixing spoon when you can just use your hands, right? 
That's why we've got hands. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work that butter into that flour and the sugar. And I just dumped everything in together. You know, sometimes you make cookies, you mix the sugar and the butter first, or you different, do different things. I just like, in this recipe, mixing it all in together all at once. It saves time. So we can already see we've got kind of a nice, kind of crumbly consistency there, right? So just make sure to work in all that stuff. And I got the monster hands. This is... <laughs> I like to make a mess. If you're not making a mess, you're not doing it right. All right, and while I've got all this going, I've got that oven preheated to 375 degrees because we are going to bake this once I assemble it. Now, I've got a little bit of milk here, and I'm using whole milk because I believe in whole milk. And I want to do, now, I, the recipe that I have tested with this calls for a quarter of a cup of milk, but I always kind of build up to it gradually. So you can kind of see this is already coming together. That was probably about two tablespoons that I put in there, but it's nice and soft, but it's not overly wet. You know, you're really kind of, this is when you're looking for the right consistency. So it's just coming together and it's like cookie dough, right? Reminds us of cookie dough there. Well, I got a sample for you here very shortly. Oh, okay, perfect. Let's turn this off before I burn down the store. That would not be preferable, right? Okay. So now if you guys see, see that consistency? How it, it really kind of firmed up there. So it's more sauce-like so that we're not going to lose all of our really great biscuit in there. All right. And then this is the very scientific part. You want to help me out? Yeah. All right. Watch out. This is hot, so don't burn yourself. All right. So then you just take, are your hands washed? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Perfect. So go ahead and take just a little bit like this. All right. Like a, like a Wadsworth. And then just throw it right on top like there. Perfect. And then just to toss it right in there. And we're just going to make a nice little crumble topping here on top. And what's going to happen is now I'm going to bake this. And it's going to give us a nice crispy top, but some of that is going to sink into that fruit and it's going to be nice and gooey because we like a little bit of variety of texture. Oh, you are a pro at this. All right, perfect. So you guys see what we're going for here? Just a nice little topping on top of our fruit. And now what I'm going to do is pop this in the oven for about 40 minutes. Now, the very first time I bake this, this poor lady over here, she gets to try all my experiments. So I was like, I got this idea. And she comes over and it turned into soup because I only cooked it for like 25 minutes. It got a little crispy on top, but it really didn't bake up inside of it. But it was tasty. <laughs> what are moms for, right? So you do want to make sure to bake it long enough, though now it also depends on your own personal oven, so you got to know your appliances, right? Um, mine at home, it takes about 40 minutes to do it, whereas we've got this beautiful little convection guy right here, it's nice and small and compact, it takes about 30 minutes. So um, gas or electric doesn't matter as much, it's just a matter of what you're going to really look for is it's going to be nice and brown. Well, let me show you. You want to see it? Here we go. Here's the finished version. So I would not have just pulled that out of the oven by handling it, but this came out about 15 minutes ago, so it'd be perfect for eating. All right, you ready? Woo! So that's what it turns into. And so we see how it's got that nice little browning on the top of it, and then also just all that sauce really kind of came together, and it's even more ooey and gooey. All right, so, and this is great for if you're doing a dinner party. It's a lot of fun because you pull this out of the oven and serve it up, and people go, oh my word. I mean, how pretty is that, right? But as you can see, that was super easy to do. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we just top it up with a little whipped cream on top. And you have dessert, my friend. There you go. <laughs>